to the Myla Cup, and it is finals time. We are starting things off in Tier 3 as we see the Pottstown Mud Dogs of the Philadelphia Division against the Queen City Crowns of the Carolina Division. Who would have thought that these two would be meeting again as the number one and two seeds? Pottstown Mud Dogs had faced the crowns before they beat them four to one the crowns make it here after an overtime win over the bay area burger boys as they meet along the boards with a wraparound shot and stopped as we saw the number 27 make that wraparound so the crowds making an attack early Making a feed out the boards, a good block by Eric Levine, the guy to watch for the crowns. He leads the team on points with three. And a shot on net and covered up. And I would expect that that is Kale Bowman in the net. And I believe that is. Now we'll bring in my broadcast partner, Chris Blair. Great to be here, Daniel. Here we are. It is the finals here. We are at tier three. The Queen City Crowns and the Pottstown Mud Dogs on day three of the Milek Cup. Had all sorts of issues with the weather, but it looks like it's cleared up and we're ready to go here. First period. Still scoreless. And that one held by we see the number on what who's our netminder for Kale the crowns Bowman. today Kale Bowman yes and he came out of Carolina as the most valuable player he he has been fantastic in the net especially in the divisional final where he made a shorthanded stop against the Raleigh surge Corey Carr won the draw there for the Mud Dogs, so they've got it down in the zone. Along that left-hand side. Both of these teams played four games to get here to this final. We can talk about that a little bit later, but right now, the Mud Dogs continuing to press the attack. Number nine, Jesse Truman makes a play. Dan Brady tries to sweep that one aside, and we got a whistle. that ball goes out of play the Pottstown Mud Dogs come in with a very strong offense they've only allowed three goals up to this point the two to watch for for them is Brian Prendergast and Dan Brady who we just mentioned just a moment ago the Dogs win again there's another shot by Jason Lombardi pressed along the side wall Joe Marshall of Queen City trying to get it out now that's on the left-hand side. Mud Dogs get it back in. A quick shot, that one. Reaching and gloved down by Bowman. He wants to watch for the crowns. Eric Levine with three points. Benton Hindley has a few assists under his belt. And Brendan Fritz, who got the overtime winner in the previous game against the Burger Boys. They tend to play a speedy game, so watch for that, but it's maybe a little difficult with a slick floor. Yeah, we'll definitely want to keep an eye on the weather. It seems like, based on the radar data that we've seen, uh, it seems like the worst of it is behind us here. 7.03 of the first period, scoreless. But, uh, Daniel, I know you've got your eye on that weather tracker, so we can see if anything is going to change. But, yeah, definitely keep an eye on that slick floor. Jim Bateman, right circle, set to take the offensive draw for the Browns, and they get it. And Daniel, I know Carolina is your stomping ground, so hopefully you'll have some interesting insights for the Crowns for us. And I know that was a very thrilling finish for the season for them. Hopefully we can talk about that in a little bit. But in the meantime, that one goes down, and oh, we got a whistle here. They're calling offside, I believe. 
we take a look at the crowds going back to their end and one of the big issues for them has been penalty troubles they had accumulated quite a lot of penalties and that included uh in the previous game against the mud dogs a, a major penalty had been assessed at the, near the end of the game so they got to get that under control however their penalty kill has been doing a great job getting their guys back on the floor the draw comes all the way back looks like they're even calling that an intentional offside regardless crowns punch it back in that's number 23 james forbes who gets Not in here. deep 635 here in the first period sticks coming together high there working it down into the corner the mud dogs fling that one around the boards but can't get it out Forbes there right in front of the net, tries to make an opportunity. Now right in front of the benches, Mundocks come in, gain the zone along the left-hand side, and good defensive stick there, right like Crowns. Just break up that play and then get, get it in deep and get a change. Cole Steltz picks it up in his end. And they're just gonna walk it out as their forward lines also make a change. Josh Greco for checking from Crowns. in along the left-hand side and now coming back in. This one's going to be a little bit back and forth and that one juggled a little bit by Corcoran, but he's got it. I had spoken with them yesterday. And you know how you and me talk about how we were expecting Bay Area to be the team to watch? What they had told me was that they felt that the Raleigh teams were a bigger challenge. Whether they really believe that or they're fighting words, I'll leave that up to you. <laughs> well, you know what? We talk about that quite a bit. We want to focus on the game at hand, but honestly, that those California teams did not do very well here in Marlton. This is day three of the Mylet Cup. We've got a ring of all four finals games stacked up back to back to back for you here this afternoon. We appreciate your patience with the delay. Like I said, weather has been a bit of a thing. It appears to have cleared up, and action is back underway here in New Jersey. We've got the Tier 3 finals for you right now. The Potsdam Mud Dogs coming out of Philadelphia. Queen City Crowns coming out of Carolina. About halfway through the first period, still scoreless. The Crowns dump that one in. Chased after by Eric Levine. Four fifty of the first period. Mud Dogs trying to work that one out. Nice job on the pitch there by Frank Lossy. Still got it. And dispossessed behind the net. Kicked away as the Mud Dogs player lost his stick. Gets that one up to the half wall. And the crowd's forced to retreat a little bit. Green City fumbled that one at the blue line. A lot of neutral zone play here. Not a ton of really solid contained possession space has been at a premium in this game first five and a half that one tried to kick back out to the point but not quite on target so it's going to come all the way back and chase back by caleb brownlow he had seven points in the regular season three goals and four assists gets that one into the middle as you can see, it does look like it is continuing to rain a little bit. We will be keeping our eye on that as this game progresses and as the afternoon progresses in general. Mud Dogs have it in the offensive zone and they sling it down into the corner diagonally. Behind the net. Crowns get it up, but not out. Left hand circle takes a shot. Good look, not sure if it made its way to Bowman. Again, back and forth we go. Now this one handled by Crothamel. They get it in deep and they score! But not one nothing! That looked like it came off a rebound. Back to Corey Carr. He already has a few goals from this tournament. And receives that pass. Gets right by Brownlow and finds the corner around Bowman. It's going to be a tough showing for the crowns with that slick floor. And I think what you were saying about 
uh, low possession time. I think that both teams are being a little cautious, trying to make sure that they can grip the floor. And that definitely makes sense. We see this a lot in these tournaments where teams aren't as familiar with each other as they would like to be. That feeling out period is very common in the early goings here. Now we're just shy of three minutes left to go in the first period as Potsdown has the first lead of the game. But it's very common to see them ease into things, and obviously the weather is another factor there. Bowman has to paddle that one aside, and now takes a look behind him. Mud Dogs still on that left-hand side, right in front of Queen City's bench, and that ball just rolls off his stick. Swing and a miss there, trying to bat it out of here. There's Bateman again, tries to get it in deep, and he's denied. Right back, but Potsdam still has it. They've got to tag up. They do, and they just dump that one in and rooming around. Brown's first one's on it. Send that one up to Kevin Walensky. On the near side. Just about two minutes to play here. Fanda at the blue line. As Quinton Henley tried to get it in deep. Shoveled forward on the backhand and got it deep. And Cocker didn't like what he was going to see, so he's just going to hold on to that one. Corey Carr's goal that makes it the third of the season as this tournament is sponsored by Milek, official sponsor of the National Ball Hockey League. And of course, we will have the Milek Cup awarded for tier three within the hour, and we have three more coming up a little bit later. This is all finals here on the last broadcast of the season. Buck 45 left to go here in the first period. Pots down leading 1-0. Uh, Dan Grady just lost it. Queen City trying to tie. Nice little move on the backhand. Gets that one in front. And couldn't get it on net. And that shot from outside gets picked up and sent in deep. Chad Price chasing after that one. Trying to beat out the icing. Just doesn't. And to that point... Teams are going to have to be more careful with their icings, too, because with a slick rink, you can't go full speed without crashing into the boards. Before we got onto the broadcast today, we were watching the the Dogs and 716ers in the semifinal game for a Tier 1, and they were slipping all over the place. So they're going to have to adjust to the, to the game, especially when they talk about it during the first intermission. Browns here late in the first period trying to mount an attack. I want to tie this one up. Don't want to go into the intermission down. A minute 15 left to go. There's a shot. That one loose in front and knifed away by the Mud Dogs. Bounce around. Jeff Kennedy, first one on it. Gave it away. Two on one down low. Pulls back. Almost hits his late man. Doesn't like the pressure. Now he's got to back off. You can see him doing well to defend there. That was a dangerous opportunity. That one up the wall, trying to hit Jason Lombardi. Lombardi's open on the point. They're feeling pressure down in the corner. Needs some help, but he gets it. Trying to outman that one just out of the reach of Lombardi. It's going to go all the way down. Will it be icing? No. So Corcoran's got to play it. 36 seconds left to go in the first period. Mud Dogs leading 1 0. Feeling a little bit of pressure now. Down to 30 seconds. And that one sets up the wall for Brian Prendergast. Prendergast, one of their big playmakers with eight assists on the regular season. And there's a play that just goes wide of Bowman. And that one ends up out of play. So we'll have a late face-off in the crown zone here in the first period. And Prendergast already has three goals to his credit during this tournament. As he just has the speed to go to the right circle, but just misses high. That's going to bring the Face off outside the zone. Still battling for it in the neutral zone as the crowns trying to get something here in the last 10 seconds. Mud Dogs with one opportunity perhaps. Can't get through his man, and that was just going to be picked up by Jerry Jenga as the buzzer sounds, and that will do it for the first period. As we head to intermission, it's 1 0 Mud Dogs over the crowns.
chapter one, the Mud Dogs lead one nothing. Daniel, what are your takeaways from that first period? Yeah, this was about really both teams trying to adjust to the slick floor. Uh, this is different from the previous games they played yesterday uh, in what was first pretty warm weather and then pretty cool weather. But the crowds are really going to have to try to put the pressure on. They already know that they got to make adjustments. But as the ring dries up, I think they'll be able to put their speed into play and try to take advantage over the Mud Dogs. And that one's offside for the crown. You mentioned it, the Mud Dogs, with a very strong showing early on in this tournament. They took down the Vegas Shiners 5-1. They beat the Bay Area Burger Boys 8-1. They actually beat this Queen City team 4-1. And then today, to get into the final, they took down the Red River Hot Sauce 6-0. So a very potent offense and a staunch defense. So the crowns have quite a lot of work cut out for them. We'll see if they are up to the task. First 30 seconds gone here in this second period. Queen City trailing one nothing here. And this is the first of three finals, that, or four finals rather, that you'll have for you. This is the tier three final here in the 2022 Milek Cup. Thank you for following the NBHL all season long as it has expanded and grown so much in its second season. Exciting to see it basically double in size. So we're not bringing you two finals today, we're bringing you four. The Mud Dogs in their first one, trying to be the first tier three champions ever. But here comes Queen City on the left hand side. Makes a move. Oh, and what a save! Unbelievable joy, Corcoran! He's an Mud Dogs. Retain the 1-0 lead. Now on the other side, coming back, takes the shot. That one held up by Kale Bowman. Team's trading chances here in a wild opening for the second period. Out into the corner. Crowns. Roll that one up. Mud Dogs still have it. Ten across. Takes a look. Fire looking for the deflection there. Good hands by Lombardi. But he couldn't make it go. Held in the line by Brady. And that one broken up in the middle by Joe Marshall. Marshall's just offside, so he's going to have to back off. Mud Dogs again. Katia gets that one in front. Lombardi's right there. You got it, you got it. Let's go to the crowns breakaway. He has all that space, and it was a combination of him running out of room on the right side and Corcoran making a save under the category of Yankee Doodle Dandy. Best offensive chance that they've had so far in this game. 6.45 left to go, first period, second period rather. That one bouncing and sliding. Another chance for the crowds and they couldn't make it go. Snap around along the near side. Batted out of the air in the neutral zone, but not controlled. Josh Greco tried to get it in. Greco on the four check. Comes right down into the corner, but can't do anything with it. Jack Ingles also attacking there, but he couldn't. Now pinning all the way back is Lazi. He's all over the ball today. Frank Lazi, number five, with speed on the right hand side. He's got help if he needs. He goes to the middle. And that one held out. Caught front blocked. Henry had 
so it's going to go back for an icing. Well, the crowds are having plenty of shots at the net. Frank Bosey on the right. He has an option, decides to go for Josh Greco and almost had a tip in. Then it goes back to Matt Henry. But they're up against a pretty good defense who are getting in the right position. And of course, not to mention, we have two of the best goaltenders in Tier 3. Henry was wide open right there, but like you said, the Mud Dogs were in better position to block that shooting lane, and it never found its way to Corcoran. Now the Mud Dogs are back on the attack, and that one goes just wide. Still held, they keep it in. Now down into the corner. Then impressed against by Jeff Kennedy. Nick Cetera rims it around. Picked up on this side, he goes back to Lombardi and throws it right up the gut, but no one was home. Talk about it all the time, those no-look backhanders are so dangerous. It's risk-reward, and there was just no one there. Brady flips that one high, and it's going to come all the way down, but no ice. Oh, yes, it will be icing. No, it is going to come all the way back. Yeah, they were trying to cherry-pick him on that one. But as you see, the crowds do have plenty of offensive power would we cover them back in Carolina division? The, the division was a offensive first team, even from the blue line. They will take any kind of shot that they can see. That's something that pops down. I pretty much told them their defense, and that's why you're seeing them in those positions, taking up those lanes. True man wins the face off, but it comes all the way back. Midway here in the second period, Mud Dog still leading 1-0. It's been a lot of neutral zone play, not a lot of clean looks. Both teams doing a good job of keeping players to the outside. You got a couple breaks here and there from both sides, but nothing solid. Henry gave it away, though. Thought that would have been offside, but I guess it didn't cross the red line. 4.15 left to go, second period. Settled down in the right-hand circle. Battle by Krothamel, but he lost it. Oh, big shoulder by Lombardi. No call. We play. Oh, there's a shot. Oh, what a kick save moment. Tremendous stop. Crowd's coming in again. Right along the red line. They get it in deep. But remember that save. If the crowds come back to tie this, that was spectacular. From the shove from Lombardi to the kick save from Bowman. What a sequence. This one's going to come all the way down. No ice. 3.35 to go. Second period. Crowd's trying to come alive. See if they can build some momentum off that huge save. And just a slip and fall. My dogs. Two on one. There's a shot. Oh, and it goes wide. Second chance. Stays out. They have it behind the net. Walk it up the circle. Goes down into the corner. 3-10 to play. Second period. Mud Dogs up 1-0, trying to increase the lead. Crowns trying to generate some offense, but they're heading into their zone. These long shifts are always dangerous. Players on the bench standing. We're having some technical difficulties at rink side. Sorry about that. We'll try and see if we can get some updates. As of right now, it is still 1-0 Potsdown. Queen's trying to mount something here with under three minutes to go. We're seeing if we can get you back rink side. But Daniel, what are you seeing so far from these teams? A fast-paced game, and so far, and as we do get our feet back, the, the crowns needed to put the pressure on, and right now they do seem like they're trying to make a pushback, but we'll take another look at that save by Bowman, as I'm sure that the crowds will want to start 
pushing back with the body after that big hit at center. Two minutes left to play here, second period. Mud Dogs up one nothing. There's a shot from way outside at the red line. Turned away. They've still got it right hand side of the circle. Takes a shot that one goes wide, bouncing behind the net. There, Chad Price has it right in front. Tries to make a move. Just kind of bounced on him and didn't have the control he wanted. That one just sails over Price's head, and the crowds have it again now. Late here, second period, trying to generate some offense and running this one down is Joe Marshall into the cage in the corner, but he can't control it. Mud Dogs, right through the legs. Oh, and what a defensive play there by Greco. Good stick. That would have been dangerous. He could have walked in all alone. Not a lot of time left here in the second period. The crowd's trying to come in with speed. They get this one down behind the net, but Mud Dogs are on it first. Flips that one high. Gets it all the way to the blue line. Price is the first one on it. 45 seconds left to go. Shot from outside. Bowman makes the stop. Price again. Misses the net. Behind the cage. Tries the backhander. Got it with Prendergast. Runs into some physicality here. 31 seconds left to go. Second period. Mud Dogs hanging on to a one nothing lead. Oh, and we're going to have a penalty here. And it looks like it's going against Pottstown. So everyone comes along the boards. Let's see, Prendergast. Yeah, he. Yeah, he was holding him against the boards when the crown did not have possession, so he's gonna sit for a minute and we'll have our first power play. Well, this is the kind of opportunity that the crowns need. We see it all the time. Special teams are so important. Just under 30 seconds to go here in the second period. The crowns trailing one nothing. But they're no stranger to close games. Actually getting to this final with a 2-1 OT win over the Burger Boys earlier today. Greco wins the draw. Tries to make a quick move by Ingles. Shoveling for it. Covered by Corcoran. As we saw with the crowds, they will look for any kind of offense opportunity. They will take that shot. It was not quite at the angle that... Looks like Bateman, no, no, it's not Bateman, but it was not at the angle that they had wanted. And as you saw, Corcoran plays an aggressive stance. So they got to play that ball around a lot more. That one goes out. Looks like the Crowns are trying to argue for a delay of game. I don't think they're going to get it. They are yeah, still on the not, power play. Yeah, not uh, like, like that. If, if it was like someone closed the glove on the ball, that would have been one thing, but there's nothing against holding it against the board. There's another shot. Just like we mentioned earlier, they'll even take shots for the point. That hard shot from Jerry Janiga. Yes, watch for them, they'll take them from the points. Janiga there on that right point. Final second starting to tick down here in the second period. And that'll do it. There's the buzzer. So with two down, the Mud Dogs lead this one in the Tier 3 final. 1-0 as we head to intermission. Here we go. Third period, Tier 3 final. The Queen City Crowns trailing the Pottstown Mud Dogs 1-0. The Crowns have 33 seconds left to go on the power play. That sounds like, Daniel, uh, from what you know, their, their whole plan here is to just take it from the outside and try to pick up some garbage. That, that's what the Carolina Division has tended to play like. But, of course, they have some close-up chances on Corcoran, so it would be a bad idea to take some rebounds as well over 33 seconds left on the power play i'm not waiting i'm attacking now that makes sense they win the face off back things up a little bit and take a look about the zone entry they gain the red line and just send it in deep 
Now 20 seconds left with the man advantage. Nice little turn away to get that one away from Ingles. Mud Dogs have it, and this will just about do it for the power play. That one actually got on net. Bowman had to make the stop. Final few seconds, two and one, and that'll do it. Even strength, so that's it for the power play. Back to five on five, and the Mud Dogs come right back in. Here the third, here to the tier three finals. They lead! Trying to get more. Works it behind the net to the bottom of the left hand circle and the shot. That one goes just wide of Bowman. Another shot this from Johnson Brown dangerously behind the net. Brown scrambling a little bit, trying to get this one out, and they flip it high. But then stop right in front of the Mud Dogs bench and they come right back in. The weather appears to be clearing up. That's a good sign. On that left hand side, right back to the point, takes a look and just sends it down into the corner. They do lead. But there's a lot of time left in this game. You know they want another one. And Bowman with a shot and the save. A lot of pressure from the Mud Dogs coming off of that penalty kill. They were looking to go from behind the net. They had a few options set up on the low circles. The Browns have got to be careful and try to play a tighter defense. But they've got to make that counter attack quickly. It's definitely a challenge here talked about the slick surface hopefully it's starting to dry up a little bit but time slowly running out for the crowns you know the mud dogs aren't comfortable they want to get more on the near side try to set it up the wall and that one's snuffed out by the mud dogs and they have it again back down to that corner matt henry defending sends it around to his partner Working behind the net. Don't want to give it away in a dangerous spot. Back up for Henry. Sends it wide on the attack. There was a touch, so no icing. Eight minutes left to go here in the third period. It's 1-0 Potsdown. The first ever Tier 3 final of the Milet Cup 2022 in Marlton, New Jersey. The end of the second ever NBHL season. Mud Dogs looking to become the first of four champions crowned today. Stay with us all afternoon and into the evening as needed yeah, here on twitch.tv slash NBHL official and MVP TV. That one just escaping the reach of the crowns. But it'll go for Isaac. So they'll have a chance in the offensive zone. This will be an important draw here as each minute becomes more and more critical with this being the very last game. Of course, the big puzzle for the Crowns is to try to get around that Mud Dogs defense as they are just in good position. I assume that they had studied up on, on the tape seeing how aggressive the Carolina division is. There's that shot from outside. Corporate takes a look at that score! It was either going to come from the point or down in the slot and finishing off the jump. I think this is good. Going to Brendan Florian. And he finds that ball that squeaks right through the pads of Corcoran. Yeah, yeah, watching the replay. That looks like Florian got it. Corcoran went down on the butterfly and it just squeaked between the pads. And number 15, Brendan Florian. He didn't have any points in the regular season, and he just tied it up in the final for his team. Mud Dogs oh, try to answer back! Oh ho! Rendergast thought he had it, he celebrated. It's now down into the corner instead. There's a shot from the knees! Rendergast can't find it, he wants a call! Oh, hang on! I think he's gonna get one. If it is, it's gonna be for closing the hand on the ball. And yes, it is. They are going to call it power play for the Mud Dogs. I've already mentioned that the Crowns have been in penalty trouble all, all tournament long. But let's see why Prendergast thought that was going in. And, oh, that was right along the line. It was behind Bowman, but the defense came to the rescue. Play there. 
Peter Beck pulling it off the goal line. The shot for the point. That one goes high. Midway third period, we're tied 1-1. 635 left to go in the tier three finals. Mud Dogs on the power play. They get that one in deep, get it on Bowman and it's forced to cover. Keep an eye on the Crown's penalty kill. They play an aggressive style and for the three preliminary games that they play, they've had more possession time with their penalty kill unit than their opponent's power play unit. Well, that's the attitude that they want to have here. With just over six minutes left to go. In the third period, they got the tying goal that they wanted. Only a couple seconds left on the power play. Mud Dogs walk it in, trying to get that one in front. Nice stick there defensively to get it up, but not out. Sean Corcoran takes the shot from outside. Lombardi tries to get it up in the middle, and here comes that aggressive crowns penalty kill. They're offside, so they have to wait for a second. Prendergast has to pause just long enough for the Crowns to get it out. The final three seconds will tick down. We're even strength at 550 of the third period. Tied 1-1. The tier three finals between the Queen City Crowns and the Potsdown Mud Dogs. The Mud Dogs led for two periods. The Crowns managed to tie it up here early in the third. Potsdown has it all on this side. Prendergast slipping and sliding, and Daniel we talked about it. That surface is slick from the storms we had earlier. More bodies coming together. Crowns player hit the deck. Good, good work, good work. Right, right in front of our camera position. That one coming back for Brownlow. Crowns take a look, send it across. They gain the zone and take a shot to the right point, but it goes wide. Of course, under five to play. There's a shot, that one goes wide and high. Players coming back together, Corey Carr. He's just gonna flip that one out. Now it's a foot race. Lombardi gets to it first, sliding. He's got it. Big bodies coming together. Back to the point from Prothamel. He tries to get it through to Lombardi and can't. On the left-hand side, shot goes wide there by Levine. The Dogs battling forward at their own blue line, and they've got it. Gains the zone in a three-on-two defensive situation. Gets it in front! Diving out, and what a save moment again! Listen, I am a North Carolinian, and my heart is pumping right now. Here's the pass that comes from the corner from Jerem Crothamil, and the one-timer by Nick Sotera. But this is why Kale Bowman was chosen as the MVP of Carolina. Just somehow makes the big stops at those clutch moments. He's taking a little bit of a breather. Are we, what do, you need? do we have a timeout called or is this a stoppage for the goaltender? It looks like a timeout. Yeah, the crowns, the crowns are taking their timeout. Late stages of the third period in a 1-1 game. Looks like they're trying to give Bowman a breather because he's been under quite a bit of pressure today. But now I, they feel that they've got the momentum on their side. But of course, don't count out Pottstown. They've had a big goal differential in this tournament. And I think it's going to take another one of those leaky goals to determine this one. Well, Bowman's been superb. If, if we have time at another stoppage, I'd love to see that awesome kick save that he had earlier in this game the, that is the sort of thing that is the sort of work that has kept his team in it here late stage of the third period of the tier three final and we are one one 
Four minutes and eight seconds left. Crowds coming together right in front of the Moscow bench. One neutral zone play. He's struggling to gain the zones cleanly. Neutral zones being heavily contested, so both sides really opting for those dump and chase strategies. 340 now, and there's a shot for Green and it's loose!
They are sitting right now with a two to one lead. Are they gonna, do you think they're gonna pull Corcoran and go a full six on four for this final minute? I, they have to. Uh, it's now or never. They only have one minute to do this, and this is up against one of the best penalty kill units in yeah. this tournament. And they already have him on the bench, so I have no doubt oh, yeah. they're gonna do it. That's it. They're going all in. Six on four. Do or die. Tier three championship title on the line. The Potsdam Mud Dogs facing the most adversity they've had all tournament by a country mile. This is it. Mud Dogs win the faceoff. Queen City dives after it, and that one ends up out of play. Not exactly the plan, but it does take a couple of ticks off the clock. Still playing see, about time for the Mud Dogs. You see how aggressive Greco was there. You, you called it. Draw one again by Potsdam. Back to the point. Takes the shot. Looking for it. Behind the net. Crowns have it. They're just going to send it down. They can. They're on the kill. 45 seconds are on the clock. Queen City with the lead. It all comes down to this. 35 seconds now. Hot Dogs gain the zone along the right-hand side. They take the shot. Saved by Bowman. And he covers. If only I could show you my hands right now. I am sweating from this. Here's Pat O'Donnell from the right with a shot from the top of the circle right to the logo, and Bowman smartly covers the ball and takes the draw. It's six on four, power play and empty net. Gotcha wins the draw, but they can't control. Crowds looking to just kill time. In front, digging away! That one stays out. Mud Dogs still have it. Back at the point, Sean Corcoran takes the shot. On the far side, that one goes across. Take it back up to the point. D to D. Corcoran takes the shot. That goes go wide. On the left hand side. Back to Corcoran. Last chance. Blocked. Down into the corner. And they will go. The Queen City Crown. Have won the Tier 3 by Lock Cup. Bow down to the King. Your first ever Tier 3 champions. They did it. shorthanded goal, but then Kale Bowman made that critical stop, which turned into Josh Greco's overtime winner to send them here to New Jersey. They have no quit on them. And here's that game yeah, again. 
Yeah, if you haven't seen that uh, Carolina final, you've got to watch it. But let's take a look here at what ended it all. And you know what? I'm calling it. That's the best celebration I've ever seen in the NBHL. And it just so happens to be the cup clincher. That's awesome. The crowns. Again, if, if you haven't seen it, go back, find it on YouTube. Watch that division championship for the North Carolina division. That was incredible. Just a, an awesome, awesome OT winner. But... The Queen City Crowns are your tier three champs. And Daniel, that's just one. We've got three more championships. This is awesome. We're watching now. We're going to see, I believe we're going to stay ringside to watch the celebration. And do we have, are the women up next, Daniel? Is that correct? That's from what I understood would be... Uh, the latest sketch to come out, but uh, we'll get confirmation a little later. But right now, what's more important is this moment here the warning of the banner and the Carolina Cup. <laughs> well, the Nylon Cup. <laughs> we have Carolina <laughs> Cup back in. I, we have, we have that's, our, that's our version of the Cup back at home, but the Nylon Cup is a much more prized possession. Let's listen in ringside right now. Oh, uh, yeah. You see the commissioners giving out the cup. Unfortunately, we can't hear that, but... Uh, they were awarding the MVP. Uh, look like, is that Greco? goal. Just an awesome performance. And now they're giving the MVP. Casey, do you still like Bracey Pat I think they gave the MVP to Greco as well. Now it's the banner. But it's it's probably either in Diddy's or I don't think we give them back Oh yeah they did give them back because they gave them the wrong Awesome, awesome game. Came right down to the wire and you know take nothing away from the mud dogs. They worked their butts off. They had a great tournament and just ran up against the wall at the end there. Their offense, for the first time all tournament, failed to, to come up to it. There you see the banner presentation. The Queen City Crowns, your tier three My Leg Cup champions. All right, boys, listen. <laughs> I love each and every one of you. Tournament, amazing week, our amazing comeback win. We show grit, perseverance. We didn't give up. This is for every one of you guys. And I want a special thanks to Danny, Pimar, Imran, all the guys that helped oh, support yeah. 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 Driving, flying, whatever, support the team. Grand Bravo taking Steckler, pictures over there. Yeah. Parents, parents, Brandon taking videos. Just his brother. He's got, he's got his hat. Did we take that home? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we used to play. Yeah, yeah it's ours. For you guys. It's ours. Oh! Here we go, boys. Are be like, Listen, okay, bro, who's, who's leaving tonight? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not going to be in the group. Peter. Hey, hey. Peter. Yeah. 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 Are you going to be gone? Anybody else leaving? Not hanging out with the group? Uh, I am. We're going to trade Keenan have to go to his class. I got one thing to say. I got one thing to say. 
it was a hell of a ride with you guys. If I'm not playing next year, go out and do it again. Yeah. 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 Good goal. Anybody else yeah. have yeah. the last yeah. words? Yeah. Josh? Away in both. Let's get all you guys. It's a journey. Let's get some hockey at the Cornelius or Huntersville, right? So yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.